He was the first worship pastor to grace the stage of Toronto Chinese Community Church. His journey brought him through waves of adversity and finally to the shore of Superstar Bay. But behind the pulpit lay a very different story. Who is Daniel Lung? What circumstances led him into full-time ministry? Who were the people who helped him along the way? And just why is he really, really ridiculously good-looking? Tonight, Daniel Lung, as you've never seen him before in Behind the Pulpit. Daniel Leung's dramatic journey began in the bustling heartland of Montreal. He was so active that every time when he come home, with, uh, uh, he hurt himself. Oh. You know, sometimes <laughs> here, sometimes here, sometimes there, you know. But while he grew up in a Christian family, Daniel did not know Christ. He attended church and the Christian functions, but his life was lacking in purpose and in passion. Speaking of passion... Yes, he was hot. I tried to pick him up at TC, <laughs> and uh, but later found out that he had a girlfriend already, so it didn't really work out that way. I thought he was kind of like a bad boy, you know, really high on himself. <laughs> but, I don't know, he got into a lot of trouble with friends. You know, just one of those people who tried to pick up girls wherever he was. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, throwing things at houses. <laughs> he just got into a lot of trouble at night. And it wasn't a good period in his life, I don't think. You worry about his spiritual life. <laughs> you know? So every night that he had been praying for him. And over a year, and in March of 1992 at Teens Conference, God answered their prayers. And uh, I remember the speaker just giving a very challenging, a very convicting message. And uh, I just felt like I couldn't resist anymore. Um, I just felt that the Holy Spirit was tugging at me and, and the hope of uh, a different kind of life was just so uh, irresistible to me at that time. And uh, so the first available opportunity, I wanted to be baptized, I wanted to Follow God the best that I knew how. And follow God, he did. His friends and family immediately noticed his transformation, like a beautiful butterfly emerging from its adolescent cocoon. I actually saw like him really transform, and after he got baptized, I think I really saw that he took his faith seriously, and he started to um, just be a true Christian and with a lot of integrity. For Daniel, the good times were beginning to roll. He was pursuing a Bachelor of Science at the prestigious University of Toronto and had just entered a blissful relationship with Maki. But the snow globe of his career would soon shatter into shards of uncertainty. for him. I feel like he didn't really know exactly what he wanted to do in life. Um, I know he thought about being an occupational therapist and environmental scientist and then all along I felt like, you know, his calling is ministry. I think that's exactly where he belonged. So yeah, it wasn't until his very last year towards the end that he felt like, oh, maybe I'll give Tyndale a try. He said he wanted to study in Tyndale and then I was very happy. I was so happy and then I Thank God for that. His time at Tyndale resulted in a Master's of Divinity with a focus in marriage and family therapy. Coincidentally, this was also the specialty of the critically acclaimed, exceptionally eloquent, Pastor Kinson Lo. So when Daniel first approached me about doing an internship in our church, um, I was actually really excited because he was a guy who was specializing in marriage and family counseling. And hey, that's my passion too, and this is the same background, so I thought what a great fit he would be for our church. 
And then, you know, um, I thought about, but then again, he's applying to be a pastor as well in our church. And, you know, I knew him from a long time ago, and I knew the kind of stuff that he was into. So I'm just wondering, you know, would he be a good fit to be a pastor? Besides, there's only room for one lum in this church. Hi, uh, my, my first impression of uh, Daniel uh, when he was a student in seminary uh, is that uh, he is very, very interested and has such an open mind to matters of faith. And uh, whether it's his papers or assignments, uh, he always put his uh, best foot forward, 110% uh, to fulfill it. In 2002, Daniel and Maki were married in a fabulous celebrity wedding in the heart of Toronto. And in September of that year, Daniel began his official pastoral ministry at Toronto Chinese Community Church, creating a sensation with his honest testimony, firm doctrine, and youthful energy. Pastor Daniel, so, uh, it's moments before your sermon. Uh, how do you feel? <laughs> I, I got work to do, so I, I gotta... Oh. But behind the surface, Daniel Lowe was a very different character. Daniel is the kind of pastor that's so hardworking. Sometimes he locks himself in his office, never to be seen, and, and, and he would just leave a little bit of slight opening in his Venetian blind, just make sure that people know that he's there. But his door is always closed, and he's always, you know, seemingly working hard and talking on the phone. One time I caught him, and he was still talking on the phone for so long, and I noticed, wow, that must be a good conversation, until I noticed that the phone line, the phone call, was actually loose on one end. Uh, eventually, uh, we encouraged him to you know, look into the whole worship idea and uh, soon he uh, identified himself as the worship pastor. Um, but the strange thing about Daniel is, you know, he's the worship pastor but um, he never led worship, not even once. And so we, after years of just urging him, you know, come on Daniel, we want to we see you up there, we want to see you lead the congregation. Finally, a few months ago, he had the courage to stand behind a microphone. He didn't even lead the worship, but at least he was willing to sing. But you want to know a secret? We had to tell him to turn his mic down, because it was so awful. So in, in January, I, some of you might notice I got my shoulder surgery, uh, my, you know, just fixed. And, you know, people ask me what happened, I say it's a, it's an old basketball injury, you know, it dislocated more than 10 times already, but, but what really happened is, uh, is actually, is actually Daniel. He said, we're just, you know, we're just going to play a game and it's not going to hurt or whatever, but, you know, it's just kind of like a prank that, that went bad and he just twisted too hard. I told him not to stop it, but he just continued twisting and twisting it. And yeah, it just hurt. And I tried complaining to, to Pastor Harding and, and the church board and everything, but they said, no, 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 we, we, can't, we, we can't tarnish his name. He's getting ordained this year. So they told me just to make up a story, say it's a basketball injury, but really it was Daniel Long. He just, he just hurt my heart and, my, and hurt my shoulder. But whether he was joking around with the staff or riding a bicycle that's too small for him, Daniel truly found his home at T3C. And now, six years after his humble beginnings, Daniel Loam is finally going to be ordained. Yeah, I think with him becoming a reverend, I think there's going to be a lot more busyness in his life, but at the same time, I think he's also learning to prioritize a lot better as well. So, I mean, I think it's... Yeah, I think it'll be really good. I mean, he's going to be able to perform weddings that, you know, he, of people he mentored when he was in Genesis, and we were involved with that. So, yeah, so I think he's really excited about it. When, when, when I know that uh, you could, you going to ask, you going to ask me to face the camera, I think about two words, you know. One is in my chapter, uh, chapter 6, 8, you know, to act justly, and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. That's what we really hope that uh, we pray that they never be like this. We will be good servants. But I know that it will be very difficult. It will be very hard, you know. 
So on the other hand, I, I try to balance. <laughs> you say Matthew 10:16, you know, uh, be as sure as snakes and as innocent as souls. I hope that uh, I pray that uh, I we love this child. I will love Daniel, and I hope that he will be a great pastor. Daniel, um, all kidding aside, uh, it's been a wonderful time serving with you. Uh, I am honored and privileged to have been able to be a part of your ordination service. This is God's affirmation of your calling into ministry, and we are affirming it with you. So congratulations to both you and Maki, to your family, and uh, God bless you. Reverend Daniel Love, uh, I want to congratulate you uh, on your very special day. It is quite an honor. And I want to remind you that God is always first in our lives. You may be a violent man and a heartbreaker, but you're a good pastor. Congratulations, Mr. Reverend. And now the future looks brighter than ever for this young, charismatic preacher. Join us next time for more from Behind the Pulpit.